In this video, we're headed to the Holly Mo Party event in Bowling Green, Kentucky. This is the fourth annual event, and this thing grows every year. There's a car show, drag racing, autocross racing, a big swap meet, and a lot of cool vintage Mopars on display. Like always, I start my day in the swap meet just looking for something cool, something that I might want to add to our collection of junk, and I found exactly that, a pair of rear tires and wheels. These are just some generic slotted mags, 15 by eight and a half, and you'll see their Unilug, which makes them basically worth no money. But the tires are what really got my attention. These are vintage Mickey Thompson Challenger Slicks. Really good condition. These tires have a cool sidewall where you can actually see the cords because they were a wrinkle wall type slick. And back then, that was just how they did it. You could see the cord material in the sidewall. So really neat. I'm not sure what I'm gonna use them on. They may have just end up stacked up with the rest of my tires and wheels but I couldn't pass them up. These 15 by three and a half inch slotted mags are like the holy grail. They're in perfect condition. I was even afraid to ask how much they were because they just looked expensive. Check out this cross ram intake manifold, 1600 bucks. Probably not a bad deal for something that rare. And check out this old go-kart. This is a Dodge Aspen RT. And this fiberglass body is in pretty good shape considering its age. It's got the cool stripes on it. This could be a really cool piece, and it looks to be pretty much functional. And then, of course, I noticed a pair of front runner wheels. Those are well drag light spindle mounts. Pretty rare, but they haven't quite caught on to the value yet. This same vendor also had this pair of fiberglass front fenders, and this is for a mid-60s Plymouth. And you can see that these are not just regular fenders. These are actually for an altered wheelbase car. You can see that wheel well has been moved forward. These are reproductions, but definitely hard to find. Here's another cool collection of wheels for sale in the swap meet. We got slotted mags, we got factory Mopar wheels, and some Krager front runners. I love any kind of front runner wheel, even if they're rough like this. And this is a pretty fair price considering that the tires and wheels will go right on an old school gasser or something like that. Now I've recently been on an old bicycle kick. So this Schwinn Fastback got my attention. It's got the five speed stick shift, really neat piece. This guy also had some other cool vintage stuff, including some center lines, 200S Americans, Lots of cool stuff here. Also in the swap meet are several project cars for sale, and I really like this Barracuda drag car project. You can see that this thing has been a race car for lots of years. It's got old Lexan windows in it, and I notice a sticker on here from Niagara Drag Strip up in New York. I don't know how long this thing has been together, but I know that track's been closed for a long time. And if you look at the stance, you know, it's got a cool 70s style stance. It's got those gold wheels with bias ply tires on the front fiberglass front end. So this is a pretty neat piece and it's priced pretty fairly at 6,000 bucks. You know, it obviously needs a lot of work, but it's a really cool vintage starting point. You can see it's got a little bit of a roll cage back here, not a full cage. You can see it's got wheel tubs. It's got old school plastic racing seats. And you know, this thing's got to have some kind of history. It's just a matter of digging it up. Here's another race car project. This one's a little more modern. You can see it's got a tube chassis with tubular A-arms. It's got a lot of good fabrication work. The cage looks awesome. It's got brand new body panels on it. It's tubbed, it's got coilovers. You know, this is a really good starting point for a modern race car. By far, my favorite piece in the Moparty swap meet was this killer Dodge Dart. And this is a legit street racer from back in the 70s. You may have heard some rumblings about the Black Ghost. That was a Hemi powered Dodge Challenger that was supposedly a legendary street race car that would come out and street race and then go hide away. But the reality is that was a bone stock street car. And in that same time frame, there were legitimate street raced cars that were outrageous. They were really pushing the limits. You know, these were not cars that you drove on the street. These were cars you raced on the street. And this is a perfect example. This is a 67 Dart and it's got a small block in it. And in a car like this, you want a small block. You want this thing to be lightweight. You want it to hook up. You want it to go down the road, whatever that road surface may be, you want it to hook. And this thing has got all the ingredients for that. Notice the wild paint job that's been on there since the 70s. This thing is a perfect survivor. And you'll see that it's got a fiberglass one piece tilting front end it's got fiberglass doors with no windows whatsoever. There's not even signs that there's ever been a window in the side of this thing, which tells you that this thing probably didn't run on the drag strip. This was specifically built to go terrorize the streets, 
but you can see on the inside of this car, the transmission tunnel has actually been cut out. But what you can see that's left of that little flange is extremely thick, which we can only assume means that this guy didn't have a blowproof bell housing in this car at the time, and he put a really thick transmission tunnel in it to kind of act as his scatter shield. So really kind of mystery surrounding this car because there's no real history on it. But from what we can assume and what we can speculate, this thing was a pretty wild combination back in the day. You see it's got a four-speed transmission in it still. It's got a Dana 60 rear end under it. This thing is a wild combination. And the guy that owns it has made a few small changes on it. He's changed a few things about the stance. that It sat up really high in the back and he's brought that down. But you can see that those wheel wells have been cut out. It's got a set of 12 inch wide keystones on the back. It's got little skinny keystones on the front. Just a perfect stance, perfect combination. He doesn't know much about the engine, but it runs and it drives under its own power. And it sounds pretty rowdy. He's got some little mufflers under there, so it's not totally, you know, just rattling your brain, but it beats the ground pretty good. And this thing has to have some history. Here's a wild one. This is a 1969 Dodge Charger 500. Notice how the grill comes all the way out to the front. That was an aerodynamic trick that Dodge did on a very limited number of these Dodge Chargers. The Charger 500 was kind of a companion to the Daytona, the wing cars. These cars were very aerodynamic. They had a special back glass area as well. And the best part about it is this thing's got drag racing history. Even though these cars were aerodynamically designed for round track racing, this one actually went to the drag strip. You can see it's got some big little keystones. It's got big slicks on the back. This thing is just too cool. Even though it's rusty, this thing is probably worth a lot of money because of its rarity, but it's just, the cool factor is there with all the rust, all of the history is right here. Here's a vintage themed 67 Barracuda drag car that was actually participating in the drag and drive competition. And you can see that big rectangular scoop. It's got gold center lines on it. It's got the right stance. It's got some remnants of old school paint job. This is a really neat piece that he was actually out there beating on. Here's another Mopar with some serious history. This is a Dodge Coronet and it went under the name Gentle Ben and there's some history behind this thing that goes a little deeper than just an old drag car. This is actually purchased at Grand Spalding Dodge. That makes it a Mr. Norm's car. It was bought new by Bernie Hansen. It's a 426 street wedge car with a four speed. And you can see that it's had a tunnel ram with two fours added to it. It's got keystones, slicks on the back. It's got some serious period correct pieces on this car. You can see the whole process of them getting this car, documenting it, getting it on the road again on the Backwoods Performance YouTube channel. You should definitely check that out. There's several videos covering this car's history. It's a really, really neat piece. Now here's a really cool 70s street machine. This thing has got a tunnel ram and two fours, gold velocity stacks. It's got hood pins. It's got a hood tack. It's got the perfect stance with slotted mags, big fat white letter tires on the back side pipes, and it's got a pretty slick paint job on it, but check out those decals right here. Super Shops, that brings back some memories. Hijacker, Hooker Headers, this is a really neat piece. And if we look inside of here, you can even see it's a four-speed car, of course, and it's got a CB radio. That is 1970s perfection. Now here's another street machine, this time more from the 80s. You can see it's got an aluminum-headed wedge motor in it. This thing probably beats the ground, but check out that chain. And this thing's got a cool 80s-style stance. It's got weld drag lights on it. It's a four-speed car. It's got all the elements you ever wanted back in the 80s and 90s. And if we keep walking, we're gonna look at this Dodge Demon, and this thing is super cool. It's got the 70s and 80s vibe going too. 
You can see it's got a flat black hood with a giant scoop on it. It's got the cool nose down stance with slotted mags, green paint, and look inside of this thing. It's like stepping back in time. Those old school buckets with the old seat covers. It's got a tack mounted to the dash, switch panel where the radio is supposed to go, but you can see on the package tray, it's got some old box speakers back there. Check out the 10 inch wide slots with some big old fat raised white letter tires. This thing is 70s and 80s all the way. And then we're gonna see another old school combo here, this time an AMC. Yes, AMCs are allowed at the Moparty event. This one got my attention because of that rectangle scoop. And of course the stance is just spot on for the 1980s. Although it has had an updated set of wheels and tires on it, this thing still has a cool old school look. Now here's a car with some serious documented history. This is a Plymouth Barracuda called the Hearst Hemi Under Glass. And this thing was made famous because it did wheel stands through the whole quarter mile because of this blown and injected Hemi that rode right behind the driver's seat. And that driver, his name was Bob Riggle, very, very famous guy. He was the mastermind behind this creation and he actually recently passed away. And check out this beautiful painting in loving memory of the infamous Bob Riggle. And you know, this car, this thing was made famous back in the day by doing those wheel stands, but it was made famous most recently by its incredible crash that happened when Jay Leno was strapped into the passenger seat. And then the current owners rebodied it, repainted it, and made it beautiful again. So this is the legit car, but it has been obviously rebuilt after that crash. So pretty cool to see it out here on display in front of the Holly trailer. This thing has got so much history, it's crazy. So really special to be able to see this car on display. And they actually made a parade lap with this car during the opening ceremonies on Saturday. So we go from a Mopar that made history to a pair of Mopars that's making history in the NHRA. This first one we're looking at is a factory experimental car. It's got 10 and a half inch wide tires under it. It's got fiberglass body panels, Lexan windows. This thing is a killer piece. And you can see the name right there, Alan Johnson, legendary pro stock driver is driving this car. And it belongs to Jeff Turk. He is known for his Blackbird Challenger that ran in the factory stock division. You can see it here. These cars are incredible and they're super fast. Seven second car that looks like something you could drive on the street. Here's another legendary Mopar drag car. This one's called the Mopar Missile. And this particular Mopar Missile is called the Wire Car. Now this thing was a revolutionary car. It was designed to run in pro stock, but from what I've gathered, the car never actually competed in NHRA competition. It was more of an experimental uh, test bed for future builds, and this thing is incredible. This thing has a killer stance. You can see it's got Halibrand wheels on it. It's got Firestone slicks. This thing sits so low in the front, and it's got a ton of really revolutionary suspension items. You can see it's got a strut style front end. It's got very minimalistic chassis and suspension pieces. This thing is bare bones. It's super lightweight, and you can see it's got a small block in it. Back in the day, you know, you would think that the big Hemi would be the ultimate powerhouse for pro stock. But this was also during a time when Grumpy Jenkins was running a small block Vega. So those lightweight, high RPM combinations were also really popular in pro stock. And just to add a little bit extra history to this car, this engine was actually the championship winning pro stock engine that was in Bob Glidden's, yes, the Ford guy, Bob Glidden, ran a Plymouth Arrow for a very short amount of time and he won literally every race that he competed in. A really neat combination here. This thing has got a ton of very correct parts on it and it's been meticulously restored. Believe it or not, this thing didn't compete in NHRA Pro Stock like I've mentioned, but it did bracket race. So this car was just sold to a local drag racer and this thing, this legendary crazy high tech car was just out there bracket racing on any given Saturday. So a really neat deal that this car came back and really was put back to you know its pristine condition like you see here. Sitting next to it is a really cool looking tribute car. This is a Plymouth Duster and you can see it's got that Mopar missile sort of like ghost lettering. It's really cool, it's not, it doesn't jump out at you like the original Mopar missile, but look at that interior, bright red, absolutely flawless interior. 
And then, of course, under the hood, this one's got a Hemi instead of that small block. Really cool combination. You can see it's got a narrowed rear end. It's got Kragers on it. It's a really nice combo. Let's break away from the drag cars for just a minute to talk about this Plymouth Duster round track car. Now, this thing was put together by Phillips Run, Drip, and Bubble Company. They've got a YouTube channel that shows the whole process of putting this thing back together and getting it ready for the Mo Party. And they actually went out and did some autocross racing with this thing, and they were in the burnout contest, which you'll see a little bit later. Here's a really neat Chrysler round track car. Now these things were revolutionary. That Hemi engine had really made a lot of progress just in a couple years time. The 354 and the 392, I mean, they were powerhouses. And you look inside of this thing, you can see it's got uh, pretty much a factory dash. It does have some aftermarket gauges. It's got sheet metal door panels, a roll bar, but otherwise, you know, that big old seat is in there. Lots of cool lettering. That's what these stock cars looked like back in the day. You can see it's got steel wheels that have been widened and reversed for a different offset. And of course, look at that engine. Hemi engine, two fours. I mean, this is the ultimate Mopar power plant from the 1950s. Now for the purists out there, I thought this thing was really cool. This is a 1969 Dodge Dart GTS. And it's a factory 440 Magnum engine. And there's only about 50 of these things that are known to exist really rare car and i just love it because the idea of putting a big engine in a small car i mean that's just perfect for making a hot rod or a drag car so this one's really neat it's restored very very nicely you can see it's got dog dish caps which i love red line tires it's got all the right stuff to make this thing period correct and very close to its original condition now here's a rare one this is a 1968 plymouth gtx hemi convertible pace car, like the ultimate combination of rare options. You can see the tag, it said one of 36, but I just can't even believe that there's that many of these cars that were built. This thing is in perfect condition. It's got red line tires, factory hubcaps, it's got the factory type lettering, and you can see this car is slick. And check out that green interior. That seemed like an odd combination with this gold exterior, but it is just a really cool piece. Definitely one of the rarest cars on the property. Moving on to the Mopar Survivor's Tent. This is something I look forward to every year because these cars are original. Most of the time they're original paint. If they're not, they're original to a particular era and it's really neat to look at. So we're starting it off with this 1970 Dodge Coronet 500 convertible. Now it doesn't have a real significant engine combination. It's just a very, very nicely preserved Survivor. And then we're moving on to this 1969 Dodge Hemi Daytona. Super rare car to begin with, one of only 21 made in this combination, and it's a real deal Survivor. You can see it's got a few decals on it, which makes you kind of wonder if this thing had some racing history. But, you know, otherwise, you can see this thing is very, very much original. Then moving on to this beautiful Dodge Coronet. This car's got amazing paint on it. It's got Magnum wheels, redline tires, you can see it's not a Hemi car or anything really extravagant, but it is a very nicely preserved Survivor. Now this is a pretty cool one. This is a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner and it's done up like a 70s street machine. This is how it was. The paint is original, but somebody has added pinstriping back in the day. And this thing is really low miles. It's a pretty rare car. It's a 446 pack with four speed, 410 gears. I mean, it was a special ordered car to go fast. You can see that deep burnt orange metallic paint is still shining good. It's got Krager wheels on it. It's got some really neat old school details, but it is a very, very nicely preserved and nicely documented Survivor. Now this car is technically not a Survivor. This one has been restored, but it's a really neat car and it's a famous car. It was in the Vanishing Point movie. It's a 1970 Dodge Challenger RT. And this thing is clean as it can be, but it was not that way in the movie. It was definitely beat up and battered after a lot of use, and now it's cleaned up, it's pristine, and it can go on tour to be on display at events like Moparty. Party. 
Now, the second generation Dodge Charger always gets related to the General Lee, but the fact is there was a ton of cool street cars and drag cars back in the day, and this is a great example. Look at that old school interior, the diamond stitch, the old Grant, or maybe a superior steering wheel. This thing's got the killer stance, slotted mags, pro track, bi-supply tires. This is a really cool 70s style piece, and it's got a sunroof. While I was walking around the Holly booth, I stopped to talk to my buddy Josh. He's got the Sleeper Dude YouTube channel. You probably know about him because his channel has absolutely just blown up in the recent year or so. I mean, it's crazy to see how quickly he's growing, and he's doing great stuff. And he built this Gremlin Burnout Car. Now, this thing is purpose-built just to roast the tires off of it. It's got a Mopar engine, tunnel ram, two fours, alcohol for fuel, and it's got those tractor pull headers, which are perfectly obnoxious for a car like this. Stick around to the very end because that's where you're going to see Sleeper Dude's winning burnout where he absolutely burned this thing to the ground, blew both tires out. You don't want to miss it. Mm -hmm. 